Okay, we're back on YouTube. We want to say welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to Keeping It Real. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like we've been doing this for years, but we've been doing it for a whole hot minute. (laughs) So we just want to say welcome back. And now we are going to talk about what to do after betrayal. Betrayal. What is betrayal? Oh, I feel a sermon coming on here. (laughs) Listen, betrayal. Even she just, just was betrayed by Judas. <laughs> I'm she so, hates that. I'm so the serious one. Oh, no. Um, the, mm, no, okay, so no, betrayal. Okay, 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 no. So let listen, it go. She was. We've we've both been betrayed. But you go first. No, well, let's just talk about what it is. You know what? When I think yeah. about betrayal, I remember that movie um, Unfaithful with Richard Gere, and I don't remember the woman's name. But she's married to Richard Gere, and then she meets a young guy who's about 28, is an artist in a loft, and she has an affair with him. And then Richard Gere finds out, spoiler alert, and then exit, like goes, goes and confronts the guy, but has a glass of whiskey with him, and then he ends up getting a bit drunk, and he smashes him over the kills head, him. and he accidentally kills him, yeah. So um, the husband kills the person who's having the affair with his wife, and then the wife ends up actually finding out that it was him. But I think the whole thing that was important was he suffered the consequence of her actions and it's always or more often than anything else it's the person who's betrayed um that ends up suffering all Mm. the consequences and the other person looks like they're just getting away scot-free they probably aren't it's probably in their mind they're probably dealing with a lot overthinking and stuff but you can't if you betrayed someone you can't rush their journey on on forgiving you if they even are going to it's betrayal is a really it's oh, a, it's a terrible It's thing. a terrible thing. So, I mean, there's there's emotional betrayal. There's uh, like emotional Physical affairs, betrayal. F- physical uh, betrayal. And if you think about people often in their workplace, they'd say, this is my work husband. Especially businesses. Or, in yeah. business, people betray business. Um, when I was in China, actually, uh, all of a sudden the story came to mind and I was sharing the stage a platform, preaching with a lady who was high up in a very well-known national brand, international brand. And she said, like, to, to literally portray Jesus in the workplace, it's like you've got to actually stamp on each other's heads to, like, get to the top. And so from her perspective in the corporate world, she said, like, betrayal was one of the biggest things that people in business do in order it's because business is so cutthroat. So there's even betrayal in business, mm. you know? Lots. Mm. If I think about how people are retrenched and stuff, you... You've been working with them for, what, like 10, 20 years, and then the next minute the, the guy just retrenches you and it doesn't, act, you know, you might have been friends with them. They just, you must feel so betrayed if you've worked so hard for that company as Exactly. Well. Um, and there's betrayal also in, in the church. I mean, you know, you think people are authentic and people that, people you look up to, leaders, and that's why one of the biggest things I say to my two boys, don't look to man. Do not look to man, look to God, because man will always let you down. Whether you put them, whether it's a politician, whether it's a pastor, whether it's somebody in leadership, people will always let you down. So your biggest thing is that betrayal can either allow bitterness Mm. to seep into your heart and truly fester and cause Stuff your life up, really. Yeah, because bitterness cripples you. And when you truly have released that person that's betrayed you, you can actually pray for them in all honesty and really ask God to bless them and not to harm them. Because that's when you know you've come full circle and and truly forgiving them. Mm. And I know because I've lived that out. I was betrayed by people that I trusted implicitly, people that were in a place of authority and leadership in marketplace ministry in the church. And they totally lied to my face about shares that were in a company that were worth quite a bit of money. Mm. And well, the amount is actually irrelevant because the, the point is, it's the betrayal. Mm. So those people were still remained in, in ministry. Uh, when I went to other leadership to try and confront them, it was just blown over, not not dealt with at all because here you've got people who are elders in a church who head up ministries it's like you think well why are they not being held accountable and 
again, that phrase comes up, I just can't believe it, yeah. right? Yeah, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. And then, you know, you go and you confront and you say it like to them and then again, they justify it with their answers and, but it's betrayal. And so again, you have to release it to God. And allow not bitterness to fester and rule and reign. My worst is when if they say like back if you if you confront someone with them they say well why would I lie to you? Oh, oh. they're lying to you, man. <laughs> they're totally lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. <laughs> oh gosh. I think so. Like I mean, there are just so many different types of betrayal. If we mm. talk about um, like romantic betrayal, there's the betrayal of the heart. Yeah, like it. It's the worst if you know. You know, if two people are having an affair, if, whether it's emotional or physical, um, behind and your And this back. is another big thing, okay? Again, in the industry I work in, people tell me everything. She's why? a hairdresser, so that everyone knows. So Painful. while I'm doing their hair, people tell me everything. And the amount of betrayal that takes place in relationships is so far-reaching. People will be having emotional affairs and sexting uh, each other or people across continents and forming these emotional attachments to people and yet betraying their spouse and i want to say stop it in the name of jesus because what you're doing is you are sowing to the flesh you are not sowing into your marriage you're actually causing division emotional division spiritual division in your family and it's not a place to build and everything that's you know what and i say this to my boys and i say this if I leave my computer, if I leave my cell phone open, my boys have full access to my cell phone, full access to my computer. That is the respect that I give them. Therefore, that's the respect I demand back to them. And that's what it would be like with a husband or a partner. 100%. Which, which actually we did have initially. We did have. Yet the betrayal somehow still took place because um, other people partnered with him in helping betray 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 myself yeah betray me and and my children because it was a a betrayal that was towards us and so even though it wasn't a sexual betrayal it was a financial betrayal and it's still the same because it's like the boys would say well we wouldn't be in this place financially if it wasn't for our father and i have to say you know what but god But God, and it's taken me a long time. It's not like something that happens overnight and you just get there. No, it's hurt and it's pain. So I had to speak it out and speak to them and say, you know what? We have to trust in Jesus. And we have seen financial miracles in our house, myself and my two boys. And I want to give God the glory and the honor for how he has come through and actually met our needs. Um, Supernaturally. I have so many supernatural stories of God's divine intervention through betrayal but it's actually being able to release those people back to jesus and saying only god vengeance is yours and only you can undertake and you know what what the locust and the canker worm have eaten what the devil comes to steal rob and destroy god works all things for good and he can turn a situation around and that's what you have to trust god for and let me just say to you there is hope in christ jesus if you're looking today at a financial situation where you have been robbed and betrayed of people in your company, business partners, maybe that you've partnered with, spouses that you have trusted that may have had emotional um, affairs with people over a cell phone and they've betrayed you like that. Work to building and work towards restoration. Do everything you can to restore and to forgive. Whatever, Whatever, I'm not saying you have to necessarily get back together with that person, in business or whether it's marital but what i am saying is work towards a level of restoration and forgiveness so that you don't actually carry that with Mm. you yeah i think um what to do after betrayal i mean we say forgiveness um if i think about a property that i co-owned with someone in england um it worked really well for a while and then um, i asked to be bought out by him and he agreed a certain price and he wasn't able to pay it at that time. So we said, okay, in four months time, or I can't remember what it was, um, we're gonna pay that exact price in those X amounts of months time. Well, what happened, it was in the 2008 when the whole crash happened, but we had written it down in emails that that was what he was gonna pay and I made decisions based on that. 
um, that, that payout that I was getting. And then what happened was the crash came, the house was worth much, much less in the end, and he would be in negative equity. So he wouldn't pay me the amount, but it, we'd already, already said that he'd already said he would pay that amount regardless of what happened in the future. And then he wouldn't let someone else buy my share out. So it ended up being that I was so stressed. I had ulcers in my mouth and it was, it was a dreadful time. And it ended up being that, you know what, you just give them what they want because rather walk away than have to deal with that kind of anger within yourself and that stress within, within yourself. But the betrayal of it is like, thanks. That's, I mean, property is one, but like, Relational for me, relational is the worst. Like, mm. especially if you know, if you were in um, uh, close, if you're close with someone, or you in a relationship with someone, you're married, and then it's two people that you know that are together. Like, say your best friend and and your, and that's often what happens. Let's be fair, Absolutely. your best friend and your and your partner, and then once. Once it all comes out, because it generally does, even mm. if it's years later, it does generally come it out. Always comes out. Then it's the parties that weren't actually involved that are the ones that are taking the brunt, and mm. then they've got to process it and decide if they're going to forgive or not. And you can't rush that process if you're the one who betrayed. Mm. And you know, I don't think anyone sets out to betray. I think that's the whole thing that everyone judges themselves mm. on their own intention, but we judge everyone on their actions, right? Mm. And. And they're not intending to do it. It just happens. And the circ- circumstances just happen that way. But it's just gut-wrenching. And, and it is gut-wrenching. It really is. And I've had to forgive someone for betrayal and quite a few times. <laughs> <laughs> <All righty. laughs> and um, it's so hard uh, because you can't help then see the person in a different light. So you either lose respect for them or you lose trust for them. And, you know, if it's a guy, you obviously need to have respect. Uh, if a guy needs respect, a girl needs to be loved. So if you lose respect, you kind of lose a bit of love for the guy. And so you have to, like, build it up again. And, yeah, I, I mean, I feel like the movies and everything mm-hmm. shows betrayal as it's okay. And it's just not. It's just not. not. <laughs> yeah. And um, sometimes it's the people closest to you that betray you. It's always the people who yeah. closest to you. Um, I was going to say, but the truth is exposed and light and light comes into the darkness. Mm. And I know we always want to be the one to expose the truth. And especially if your friends know about it, they want that to That's be exposed. That's the worst. Yeah. They want it to be exposed too because you've been wronged by someone, right? Mm. And it's so hard to be the bigger person and to step up and say, no, I'm not going to do what my ego says and my pride says and like they must suffer. I must come in the opposite spirit and be like, okay. I have to work on myself, I have to forgive myself, and I have to let whatever happens there, happen there. It's so hard to do it, but it's possible. All things are possible. It is possible. And again, what we always say, well, what we're now going to always say is God works all things together for, for the good, for those who love him. And and with God, all things are possible. And often, you, you if, just say you're going to marry someone, you might ask for everything to be exposed before. Sometimes these things are exposed and a betrayal can be exposed. And, that, you know, you need to know that before you're in a covenant with someone. Mm. So That's very true. Yeah. I feel a Kleenex moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but it's, it's true. <laughs> Guys, I, I, girls, phew. My heart goes out to all of you who have been betrayed. And, you know, even on behalf of where the church, where church people have let you down, leaders have let you down. You know, I truly want to say I repent on behalf of leadership because leaders are are human, you know. So you have to look at them and say, well, but for the grace, there go I. And hence why I always say to my boys, don't look to man, look to God. Don't look to anyone else. But Jesus. Well, people in position are PPP, pennies, panties, and pride. Yeah. It's one of the three. It get... was one of the three P's. <laughs> one of Power, the three. petticoats, or pennies. But I think if you don't forgive um, the person, even if they're not going to be in your life anymore, it's like they say when you're drinking poison and you think the other person's going to die. It'll end up eating you um, up. And actually, if the person's got a conscience, and you can pray for God to convict them for things. Oh, shakar. <laughs> <laughs> they will... <laughs> They will, they will have sleepless nights. They will have tormented in their mind. What is that, Nola? <laughs> I'm having a sleepless night. <laughs> so we're laughing now, but betrayal, yeah. honestly, I think it's, it's, it's the most painful thing. So, and I'm sorry if you've been through betrayal. 
Yeah, truly. But I think forgiveness is the most important. And I think if you've been the person to portray someone else, then you have to ask for their forgiveness, obviously. And then you can't expect them to just take you back or to heal in the time when you heal because you've got over it. It, it, it you know, once trust is broken, it's almost it's often impossible. Not impossible, but often impossible. Anything's possible with God, like you say. So God, right now, we just pray, Father, where there has been betrayal to people's hearts here listening to this father even our hearts we thank you lord god that we can actually just release those people to you father we forgive them your word says even when the disciples asked jesus how to pray it says forgive those who have trespassed against us so father we forgive them every single person that has wronged us we forgive them right now in jesus name we just we just release them to you lord god and we say father into your hands we commit these people that have caused hurt, heartache, pain, betrayal. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to go where no words can go. But that the oil, that healing balm of Gilead would just flow into the people's hearts, spirits and soul and cause healing to come. Father, it says healing is the children's bread. By Jesus, your stripes, we are healed. And that is emotional, emotional healing right now for people. I just thank you that emotional healing takes place through these airways, Lord God, into people's homes where they're listening to this. Healing. Healing in hearts, Lord God. Father, I thank you that even in us, there is a continual work, Lord God, where we, we forgive one another daily. Forgive us, Lord God, for we have sinned against you, Jesus. And so, Father, just as you forgive us, we thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us white as snow, that we can come before your throne boldly, Father, in grace and mercy, which is new every morning over our lives. And we extend grace and mercy to those who have betrayed us, and we lift those people up to you. And we ask you, God, that you would bless them and not harm them. Cause your face to shine upon them. The Bible says, bless your enemies and do not curse them. And so, Father, we bless those who have hurt us. We release them to you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs>